Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. So I just wanted to um, say I hope you're having a blessed day. And I wanted to mention some scripture that the Holy Spirit led me to the other day. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 35 through 58. And um, the resurrection body. Um, so <clears throat> it says, but someone may ask, how are the dead raised with what kind of body will they come how foolish what you sow does not come to life unless it dies when you sow you do not plant the body that will be but just a seed perhaps of wheat or something else but God gives it a body as he has determined into each kind of seed he gives its own body all flesh is not the same Men have one kind of flesh, animals another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies, and there are earthly bodies. But, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor um, <clears throat> of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, and the moon another and the stars another um, a, and star differs from star in splendor okay so let's go to the commentary down here it says um, what do we have to look forward to we look forward to Christ's victory the ultimate defeat of death and sin then we will be given imperishable immortal and spiritual bodies Paul emphasizes bodies and not just spirits because bodies are an integral part of personhood. Um, the Hebrew and Jewish tradition esteemed the physical creation in contrast to the Greek disdain for physical matter as evil and hope for the renewal of that creation. By Paul's time, this understanding had developed into a strong expectation of a resurrection and of resurrection bodies. Paul provides no timeline here or elsewhere for when that resurrection will occur. Neither does he clearly answer questions about what happens to the soul after death and before the resurrection. What is clear is that he does not expect the resurrection bodies to be given individually as each person dies. Instead, all will be given their resurrection bodies at one time when Christ returns. Now let's continue back on verse 47. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in, in dishonor and it is raised in glory. Um, my spirit is peaked when I read that. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, and it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and it is raised a spiritual body. See, that gives us hope. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a living, life-giving spirit. The spirit, um, spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. Um, and as it were, the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth, and as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are in heaven. And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, 
then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And if you look at um, verse 52, it says, The last trumpet was common imagery in Jewish literature dealing with the end times. It is figuratively speaking, the trumpet that blows to herald the Lord's return and announce judgment. There are similar references to trumpets in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, in Revelations 8, verse 2, and chapter 11, verse 15. So if we go to that, um, and the coming of the Lord, 1 Thessalonians 4, let's go to 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then let's go to Revelation um, 8 verse 2. I think I lost my little, oh there it is, 8 verse 2. thought I lost my marker card. This is my study Bible. Um, and it says, the seventh seal in the golden censer. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And then if we go to Revelation eleven fifteen, that's why my Bible is so marked up, because it is a study Bible. Okay, the seventh trumpet. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Amen.